Welcome. This video is a summary of the July 2018 Global Climate Report as prepared by NOAA. July of 2018 was the fourth warmest July on record. Its average temperature was 0.75 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, about the same as June of 2018. Now this map shows areas of record warm and record cold. Now you'll see there's no dark blue pixels on this map at all, so there were no areas that recorded record cold. And there were just a couple of areas that recorded much cooler than average temperatures. Compare that now with all the places that had record uh, temperatures set. There's 11 locations around the globe. And then there's vast areas of much warmer than average temperatures, uh, again, distributed across the planet. This indicates we have a warming world still. Let's take a look at the detailed graphs and see how, if we can compare the land and ocean temperatures and the northern and southern hemisphere temperatures. Our overall land temperatures were the 6th warmest on record, ocean temperature was the 5th warmest on record, and that combined to make the overall planet the 4th warmest July on record. When you compare the northern and southern hemispheres, the northern hemisphere was the 6th warmest on record, the southern hemisphere was the 4th warmest on record. So we've now had 403 consecutive months since there was an average monthly temperature that was below the 20th century average. You have to go back to December of 1984 before you can find such a month. So you have to be over 33 years old before you can claim that you've experienced a month with below average temperatures. You can measure how out of balance our climate system is by comparing the number of record high temperatures with the number of record low temperatures. If you have more record highs being set, then the planet is warming. If you have more record lows set, then the planet is cooling. For July, we have 5,839 record highs compared with just 1,526 record lows. That's a ratio of 3.8 to 1, which is a very, very large discrepancy. Year to date, we have 113,519 record highs set compared with 51,254 record lows, and that's a ratio of 2.2 to 1. So even there, we have a distinct impression that the planet is warming. So let's enter the July 2018 figure on my uh, chart here. And you can see that 2018 is still lacking behind the previous four years in terms of being uh, the hottest year on record. However, it certainly looks as though it's going to be in the top 10, maybe even turn out to be the fifth warmest year on record. Okay, let's take a look at the temperatures in the upper atmosphere. We'll start with the lower troposphere, which is an altitude of about four kilometers. There are two groups that do this analysis, and they both agree that it's the fourth warmest July on record. They equally get a very similar trend in the long-term temperature change of about 0.12 to 0.15 degrees centigrade per decade. Now this is lower than the surface temperature, which is what you would expect, uh, but it's still a positive trend. The mid-troposphere, once again, is the fourth warmest on record. And they again get a very similar lower rate of warming at this level in the atmosphere uh, of about 0.1 degrees centigrade per decade. The stratosphere is cooling. They believe it's the seventh coolest or the ninth coolest July on record. And they get a, uh, a cooling rate of 0.23 to 0.28 degrees centigrade per decade. This is expected from the models as the infrared being emitted by the Earth, which is partly what warms the stratosphere, is uh, being blocked by greenhouse gases. It was the 11th warmest July in the continental United States, with record temperatures being registered in California and Nevada. However, the western half of the country and the southern tier states were all well above average, as was New England. As far as precipitation was concerned, we had record rainfall in Pennsylvania and Maryland, tell me about it, and also well above average rainfall in southern Nevada and northwestern Arizona. But that has not made very much difference to the drought index there. Here is a map of the drought monitor across the United States. You can see the western states and across the southern tier, there is a large area of drought, particularly in the Four Corners region uh, of the southwest. California has been suffering from wildfires recently. The rains of last winter, coupled with hot dry conditions, produced a lot of fuel which has led to many wildfires. 
Northern California has been the hardest hit so far, with nine deaths. The largest wildfire in California state history is the Mendocino Complex Fire, which has burned over 400,000 acres. That beats the Thomas Fire, which burned 282,000 acres, which started in late 2017 and burned for six months. So the Mendocino Complex Fire is nearly 50% larger than the Thomas Fire. Let's turn from fire to ice, and the sea ice extent is still below average in both hemispheres. In the Northern Hemisphere, we had the ninth lowest sea ice extent on record, and that represents the 18th consecutive year with a sea ice extent below average. In the Southern Hemisphere, it was the eighth lowest sea ice extent recorded, and the second consecutive year where the sea ice extent was below average. Perhaps much more concerning than that is that some of the permanent ice in the Arctic is now beginning to break up. What was once called the last ice area in the Arctic Sea is breaking up. Once four meters thick and solid ice pack is now open water for the first time in recorded history. Higher temperatures, nearly as high as 17 degrees centigrade, and new t wind patterns seem to be the cause of this. And so neutral conditions still prevail, which makes it all the more surprising that July of 2018 was as, uh, the fourth warmest on record. Think of all the previous Julys that were during strong El Ninos that weren't as warm as this July during ENSO neutral conditions. The sea surface temperature anomaly is now plus 0.2 degrees centigrade. And so there's a high probability of an El Nino by October or November. They believe that ENSO neutral conditions will be returning in the spring. Let's take a quick look and see what the sun was doing in July of 2018. The average sunspot number for the month was 1.2 sunspots per day, which is a very low number, almost solar minimum conditions. However, the sunspot numbers were already recovering in August, so I expect to see higher numbers for this report next month. This puts solar minimum at least a year away and the onset of solar cycle 25 sometime thereafter. Well, let's see in summary then. July of 2018 was the fourth warmest on record despite it being ENSO neutral conditions. We've now had 403 consecutive months with above average temperatures. We have ENSO neutral conditions, but they're trending towards warmer uh, conditions, which would lead to an El Nino. The sun has been very quiet in July, but I expect it to recover somewhat in August. So until next time, goodbye.